So today we're going to go over the proper pre-trip procedure for a reefer unit and tractor unit. So coming back down, we're going to look side of the trailer, we're going to look up and down inside this compartment here. There's your battery box. If you ever have to jump, use your jumper wire. If the reefer unit ever does die on you and it won't start, you can go right from the positive terminal here to the positive terminal on the battery in the truck to jump it so you can get it started. Looking down, you're just looking down, down the front of the trailer. You're looking for any damage, checking your lights, coming along, checking your rivets, your conspicuity tape, making sure all your rivets are in place, no damp, no fresh damage. So at this point, I'm going to come down up underneath here, checking all my cross members, checking my landing gear, and I'm checking my fuel tank. With the side skirts in place, you can't see any of the under, underside of the trailer from the outside. So coming underneath here, you can visually inspect your way back. If you look at the gap between the cross members, if you see one that the gap doesn't follow suit, that's an indication that that cross member is bent in that area. So fuel tank, checking your fuel lines, tank hanger brackets, make sure that everything is tight no cracks or bulges, no leaks. Once you've got all that checked, you can come out. Let's continue working your way down the side of the trailer, looking across the top, bottom, and sides. As I said before, inspect your conspicuity tape, looking at all your rows of rivets. Make sure your lights are functioning properly. When I get back here, now I'm going to come back down, I'm going to check my airlines, make sure they're properly suspended up off the ground, got at least 18 inches clearance, I don't want them overstretched, look at my springs, make sure they're in good shape, look at my slide rails, make sure they're not bent or damaged, looking down the side and I'm making sure all four of my pins are fully engaged in the holes, and then I'm going to check my trailer suspension so I can come in here check my airbags make sure all my bolts are tight secured I can check my brake system check my tires inside tread inside between in between the tires and on around to the outside just like I've done on the truck I'm gonna come right back here and I'm gonna do the same thing on these so now I've just checked this set of duels. Now I'm going to come back, check this set same way. Start from the inside, work your way out. Come back, check my mud flap, make sure it's properly mounted. Come under here. Once again, checking my suspension, my airlines, wires, making sure everything is properly mounted, no damage, nothing's rubbing. So now I can come around the back, make sure all my lights are functioning properly. To include my license plate light, I must have 100% coverage of my conspicuity tape on the back. My lights up top are working. With my trailer, I need a, I'd have this, this padlocked and sealed if I was loaded. Unloaded, still have your padlock on there. When opening these doors, always stand off to the side. Rotate the latch open. This way, especially if you are delivering a product and if that load is shifted while in transit and it's leaning against the door, you don't want to be standing here and have it come over and then crush down on you. If you're standing off to the side when you pull this open, the weight will push that away from you and you'll be in a safer location. So now I'm going to push the door all the way open come around here and I'm going to hook the safety chain so that it is latched because I don't want the wind to catch this and swing it away at me. Proceed around here. Now I can climb up inside the trailer to check the inside of the trailer using three points of contact at all times. So 
So once you get in the trailer, you're looking down the floor, you're looking for any debris, uh, pieces of wood from pallets that may have fallen apart, looking at your sides for any damage that might have been caused by the forklift, inspect your chutes. You cannot have any missing rivets on either of these two chutes. All rivets have to be in place because if you're missing a rivet, what will happen is the way these trailers cool is by pushing air from the reefer unit through these chutes, off the it bounces off the back door and circulates back up through the trailer where it's circulated around again. If I'm missing a rivet right here, my air is gonna come out the side right here and it's not gonna properly cool the back half of this trailer. So all rivets must be in place. So I proceed up the trailer, inspecting my sides, checking my rivets until I get all the way up here to the front. In the front, I'm going to check my bulkhead for any damage. I'm going to make sure that the bottom is all open because this is where it draws the air in. So if this is all plugged up or smashed in and damaged, it cannot draw enough air into the unit to circulate back. You'll have four holes in these trailers. There's one in each of the front corners and one in each of the back corners. Make sure, especially after hauling a load at below zero, that you come in and make sure that those plugs are removed because they will put plugs in those, either a cork or a styrofoam plug, to plug those vents when hauling anything below zero. Now that I've inspected the inside of the trailer, I can come around here and close her back up. Always brace yourself, especially with the wind. Press in, rotate. You always want to look up, make sure the top latch is in as well as the bottom. Now I'm going to proceed around this side of the trailer, looking everything over. I'm going to repeat the exact same process that I did on that side for this side, inspecting the side of the trailer, inspecting each of my tires, axles, and suspension systems. So I proceed up, when I get to my fuel tank, I want to check, ensure my cap is tight. Come down, check my fuel gauge. You always want to make sure that you drop, when you're dropping this at a customer, that it is above three quarters, try to keep them full. Always, you always want to drop it full. A lot of places will not even allow you to bring it in without at least three quarters in the tank. Ensure that your landing gear handle is properly stowed. It's not out flopping around. And when you're going down the road, you always wanna make sure that your landing gear is all the way up. Not just off the ground is not good enough. It has to be cranked all the way to the top. Coming up to the front of the trailer now on this side, I'm gonna come in. I've got my registration, my trailer registration and inspection paperwork will be right in here in a Ziploc baggie. Want to make sure that's current. Check your airlines and your pigtail. And then we'll listen for any audible leaks. And then you've got the reefer unit. When you're doing your pre trip on the reefer unit itself, you will flip this switch. This is the only time you will flip this. But since operations has the ability to remotely start these units, you don't want to be inside there with your fingers and have them fire the unit up on you. As soon as you are done with your pre-trip and you've got those door closed, make sure you reset that switch. That is the only time you will ever touch this switch is if your fingers are going to be inside this compartment. So once you shut the switch off, you can step up here so you can open up this, these doors and inspect the motor for your reefer unit. Check your belts, check your wiring, check your oil, make sure everything is good to go in here. And you can close it back up. As soon as it's closed back up, first thing you want to do is go back over here and reset that switch. And then always want to make sure that your load locks are properly stored in here and the, lat and the latch is in place to keep them from falling out. Your load locks need to be stored in the load lock hanger. Pushing them sideways and cranking them against the fins will damage the truck. They go in here. That is the only place they are to be stored. 